Hi, I'm your host Vasco Duarte. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to one more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. And this week, joining us from Montreal in Canada is Alex Bagidi. Hi, Alex. Welcome to the show. Hi, Vasco. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So Alex is an experienced agile practitioner, coach and trainer with 20 years of experience in IT consulting. He's passionate about helping teams discover the best ways of working and adapt them to their context. He's worked in many different types of industries and also provides training in many agile frameworks and practices all around the world in French and in English. He's even started a uh, community called agileafrica.net, which you can check out at agileafrica.net, of course. So Alex, that was a short intro. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and how did you end up becoming a Scrum Master? I'm, I'm currently a professional Scrum trainer with Scrum of the Org. So it happened recently, went on the journey for a couple of years. and uh, But before that, of course, you need to have some experience as a Scrum Master. How did I become a Scrum Master? I wasn't always a Scrum Master. I was a project manager. I was an unhappy project manager. Welcome to the club. Yeah, you know, I was I was there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, before I took the, the red pill, <laughs> you know. But um, no, as a project manager, you know, you have to to make estimates. Uh, you have to predict the future for some of your clients, right? So that was a big challenge. And it was sometimes a little frustrating to be able to provide the right answers based on facts, based on data. And there are so many variables you can control as a project manager. So with all these experiences uh, working on tech projects and sometimes meeting the target, sometimes not, most of the time not meeting the target, I started researching and trying to find, okay, it must be another way to deliver projects more efficiently. And that's how I ended up finding Agile uh, back in uh, 2014. Uh, Agile methodologies like you know Scrum, Kanban, and um, started looking around. Are there jobs? Are there possibilities and, and positions where I can practice these practices and, and the mindsets? Found um, an insurance company where they were looking for a PM slash Scrum master. You know those uh, hybrid positions. Yeah, so that was my first one uh, back in 2014. And uh, that company wanted a Scrum Master who was responsible for the success of the project, controlling the team, you know, the classic project manager stuff. That's how I started as a PM slash Scrum Master, making all the mistakes. Yeah. Actually, like this this uh, whole PM journey is, uh, I'm sure, quite common in our audience. Uh, there's a lot of sources or, or, or backgrounds for Scrum Masters, but PM seems to be quite a... A standard one for many people, and and also this idea that you know there must be a better way, right? Like that uh, we've heard this quite a few times here on the podcast, and uh, uh, and there is, and we know there is, right? That that's what you discovered. So next, Alex, we want to talk about a story of failure, and it may be about those first few days as a scrum master or not. It doesn't really matter, uh, but a story of a moment where you, as a scrum master, you struggled. You found difficult things to deal with. And at that time, you weren't ready. Perhaps now you are, and, and we can dive into the insights and the learnings you got out of that story. That's why we talk about failure, of course. But tell us that story first. So back when I started as a Scrum Master, I, I thought I knew Scrum. I thought I understood the framework, but I actually had no idea. I was working with a team that was deported. Part of the team was in Canada, part was in India. So you can imagine first the time difference. Uh, we start our day, they finish our, their day over there. So the challenge was to really find a way to align and talk to each other. They call during the night. When we come in, we have to see what happened. So um, during the daily scrum, what I wanted as a PM and scrum master, those PM reflexes came back. I asked them, hey, uh, fill up this form, this table where you can put notes and, and, and prep the daily scrum, right? So put in notes so that we can see what's going on. They did for a few sprints. They were not happy. They didn't look happy to do it, but they still did. They filled up the form, put in all the details, and we still did the 20-minute daily scrum, quote unquote, right? So we did that for four, four sprints. At the end of the four sprints, we did the retro, and they were like, you know what, Alex? We hate your reports you're asking us to do. 
uh, before the daily scrum. You're adding work to our workload already. We hate this. Can we stop this? And uh, we decided as a team to just stop it because it didn't make sense. That was a lesson for me as a new Scrum Master, junior starting uh, that, you know, the daily Scrum is an opportunity to inspect and adapt, make sure we're progressing and not just an opportunity to, to give a report to the Scrum Master. Right. So one of the things that I want to explore here is that uh, many people out there may have heard even, you know, the daily Scrum isn't for reporting. But here's the thing. It's not that easy to know the difference between reporting and enabling collaboration. And uh, it starts with the original Scrum Guide, like way yes. back when, when we had the three questions, right? What did you do? What are you going to do? So that's all reporting. And then the third one, do you have any obstacles? Like, so w when we look at this, even the Scrum language was all about reporting. So from your perspective, what's the key difference between a team reporting or doing the right kind of daily scrum? That's a good question, Vasco. First, I just wanted to point out that uh, in the guide, uh, something that a lot of Scrum Master or even people reading the guide, they don't notice. Just before the three questions, they're writing, these three questions are an example. The keyword there is example. It's in there. If you look at the 2017 guide, it's still in there. It's not in the 2020 guide anymore. We don't have the three questions anymore, but watch out. It was just an example, just, and uh, a way to do your to 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 organize your daily scrum. Now that being said, team reporting is one thing. Team alignment and team planning for the day is something else. In the daily scrum, you find a way to be efficient and progressively get to your sprint goal. So as a team, you got to find the best way to do that. Depending on your context, depending on your realities, are you in the same country? Are you in the same time zone? All these things will take will, should be taken into account when you decide how do you. Uh, organize your daily scrum. So you don't really have to answer those three questions. That's just one way to do it. You can simply say, hey, this is what I'm planning to complete. This is the goal I have personally. This is where I want to get to done today. And, and yeah, maybe there are these things where you can help me. I need help from the other team over there. So yeah, pretty much make it smooth, make it easy. And don't make it too heavy and complicated. Yeah, especially don't add reports just before, right? Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lesson you learn. But For coming sure. back to this idea of uh, what's the role of the daily scrum, um, you say uh, you said uh, uh, in the daily we try to progress towards the sprint goal as a team, right? As a team. Uh, okay. Because obviously, you know, outside the daily scrum, maybe we have some some common meetings or maybe we don't. Maybe we're just working alone at our desk. But in the daily scrum, we're a team, right? We're trying to do things as a team. And one of the things that you said is maybe you come in and you ask for help. And, and that's actually one of the things that I would encourage everybody to put in as a standard question. In order for us to reach the sprint goal, what help do you need? What is the help you're asking us to give you or you're asking us to help you get because the help may come from management or another team or, or another team member, of course, uh, that is in the daily scrum. And I know and I'm aware that uh, some teams out there are quite big, maybe 15, maybe even 20 people in a team. And mm -hmm. uh, obviously at that time, it's very important to be explicit about asking for help because people don't necessarily know what's going on with you, right? So I really like that approach that, that you touched on, which is that the daily scrum is for us to progress towards the sprint call. And the most effective way is to ask for help. True. And, and, and even further, if, if I may do that, the thing, look, at, look into the flow-based events in the, 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 the Kanban guide for scrum teams. It's a great resource, I think. The daily scrum is about having the right discussions in a short time box. You know, asking the right questions. What's the item, the age of our items in the sprint backlog? How long have we, those items, the PBIs have been sitting in the backlog and no one has touched it? Our service level expectation. How fast are we usually delivering these things? Um, yeah, it's just about having the right conversation, I think. It makes a difference. Yeah, it is about having the right conversation. That is for sure. But an example of the right conversation is for example, asking for help. Uh, we true. can also talk about, you know, how, how long have these backlog items or sprint backlog items been in the same column and not moving forward, right? We can mine the task board for indicators that maybe there's some help that is needed, but really encourage the team members and even give the example as a scrum master, right? Like, hey guys, I need help with, and just put it out there. 
Yeah. You don't want to discover those those challenges later in the sprint that, hey, I was stuck and I didn't raise my hand to say, hey, can anybody help me? Can anybody face this challenge before and could, you know, unblock me? So, yeah. Absolutely. It's a great story. Thank you for sharing that, Alex. Hi. Pleasure. Monday is about what we learn from our obstacles and our failures. But tomorrow is Team Tuesday here on the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. We explore teams and their journeys, the habits they develop that threaten their performance, how each of our guests help their teams evolve, and the one key lesson they learned from that experience. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.